So this is actually pretty cool that you can see now who on Facebook is active now. It's quite cool. Hey, 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 Alicia. Hey, hey, everyone. <clears throat> so, I was just looking at how horrible aesthetically this entire situation is that's happening back here. We have my new standing desk that we haven't installed yet that's sitting back there. Something's leaking down the wall here. It's probably the window. It looks like I'm in a, I don't know, like some kind of horrible, I don't even know. It's just not aesthetically pleasing at all. I just don't even know if that will do, but I need the table to do the reading with the cards. Otherwise I would be out of here. I wouldn't even be sitting in here. Who wants to look at all this stuff? I'm in the office but I need the table for the cards. Otherwise I would move out to somewhere that looked a little nicer. I need to get the staff on coming to repair this and getting it fixed up because it does not look lovely at all. <clears throat> hey, 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 everyone. So I'm having a couple situations happening right now. One is that my phone is out of battery. And so we're gonna have to have a little bit of shenanigans because I need to plug my podcast mic in when it's time to record the wealth forecast and my phone is dying. So it's now plugged in and yeah, it's not that awesome. I do want to ask a question though, because I just got off a call with my YouTube consultant and we are getting ready to revamp our YouTube strategy. And so I'm wondering, do you guys love these forecasts or is it just something that you watch because I put the content out? Like, are these valuable? Do you come back to these? Do you take notes? Do you use the material through the month? Um, and I'm asking for a couple of reasons. One is because it's quite extensive to come and like do this full reading and sit and, and knock all this out and to sit through it. Um, I think most people's attention spans aren't that long. And hey, Tracy. And so I'm wondering, um, cause we're really going to be taking advantage of YouTube shorts. And so I'm wondering if it would serve people a little better to have, um, some overviews and then to have like daily videos released on YouTube, like daily shorts. So you could go and watch them or do you love them and do you get lots of value out of them? I'm just interested because you know, I mean, we have a fair amount of people that watch these um, and, and they get good traffic on the YouTube and we obviously we put them on the podcast as well. Um, but I'm just kind of wondering, are they valuable? The way that I'm currently presenting the information, I guess, is my question. So we've had a couple of answers. Prefer the one hit and then I refer back. Yeah. 
daily shorts because a lot of information in one go. And it doesn't mean we can only do one or the other, right? Like we maybe can do all. Um, maybe we do the shorts as well. Um, the thing with shorts that's interesting is that it has to be 60 seconds or less. So I can't do a weekly update in 60 seconds, but we could do some shorter weekly videos, I guess, as well. Hmm, it's just all interesting, just um, collecting information, hey? All right, well, how's everyone going? Um, how are you feeling? February 2nd? How is the... How's the month treating you so far? How is Mercury retrograde treating you so far? I'm gonna give it a few more minutes for people to hop on and my phone to charge so I can plug my podcast mic in because um, otherwise the audio is gonna be shit. Uh, they probably need to turn the fan off also. Feeling good, that's good. This is an interesting month ahead. Try to eliminate some of the background noise. Uh, yeah, the retrograde has already been intense. I do know that. I do know that and I do feel that. It's been quite intense for me. Oh no, laptop's dying, that's not good. It's especially not good because you definitely cannot go buy another laptop during Mercury Retrograde, you have to wait rent a computer or something if you need to because you do not want to buy a computer during mercury retrograde you can take it from some of the people that i've told that in the past and they've been like oh i don't have a choice i can't help it and then they buy a computer and then a year later they're buying another new one retrograde is great for getting things done we're going to take up talk a little bit about that Okay, I'm gonna plug in my podcast mic. Because here come all the people making all the noise. Can you guys hear me? Send me some hearts if you can hear me. Nice. Okay. Handy dandy cards. Alrighty. Welcome to another episode of the Wealth Witch Podcast. I am your host, Leah Steele, and today we are here for our monthly wealth forecast, our February 2021 wealth forecast. Um, it's going to be an interesting month. I'm super excited to be here and be sharing the divine downloads that came through as well as sort of what's happening energetically and astrologically. And then as always, we will do a day by day forecast. Um, so 
as always, we are live streaming this into my free Facebook group, Rich Abundance. So if you are listening on the podcast or you are watching on YouTube or Brighton, um, definitely make sure to come over and join us in the free Facebook group. If you would like, we have an epic and amazing 12 week free mini program that is housed in that Facebook group called Abundance. Um, and it's just a, a really amazing deep dive into how to continue to create prosperity and abundance in your life uh, during times of global crisis and change. So it's really, really um, pertinent to what's happening in the world right now. And I think you'll really enjoy the content. So definitely check out the free Facebook group. And if you are um, watching here on Facebook with me as I am live streaming this wealth forecast, or you are watching on YouTube or Brighton um, and you want more Wealth Witch content, um, make sure to check out the Wealth Witch podcast in all the places where podcasts are streamed. So I think that's my announcements. Um, do I have other announcements that I need to make today? Hmm. I don't really think so. Other than to just say, um, if you love the content that you get here, if you love what you're hearing and seeing, regardless of where you're watching on what platform, and you want to work a little more closely with me, the Wealth Alchemy, Ma El the Wealth Alchemy Mastermind is for sure the place to do that. Um, it is $44 a month right now. And for that $44 a month, you get, uh, access to a exclusive, uh, membership only telegram channel and chat, uh, where I deliver a daily wealth consciousness, drip journaling prompts, reflection exercises. We do a monthly group call as well as a monthly Q and a, so you literally get access to me. That's the, in some of the ways that my mid to high level clients get access to me. Um, so if you haven't signed up for the Wealth Alchemy Mastermind, I really, really encourage you to check that out. Um, the link will be in the podcast description in the YouTube and Brighton videos. Um, and we will drop a link here for you on Facebook as well. Um, it's a great opportunity to kind of learn how I work, get to interact with me, um, in a more closely knit community of people um, and get one-on-one -on -one access to me on the group calls. Um, everyone basically gets a little bit of one-on-one -on -one time on those calls. So um, it's huge, huge value uh, for a fairly small investment. You can come check it out, try it out. If you don't like it, leave after a month, um, but definitely recommend that you do that if you're wanting to know more about working with me or you're really, really looking to up-level your wealth consciousness. Um, and dive deeply into your money story and deconstruct some of the limiting beliefs and, and uh, programming and conditioning that holds you back from recognizing and realizing your infinite potential. So that is officially, I am done with announcements now. Let's move into the February monthly wealth forecast. So the first thing to note is that we came into this month in a, in a Mercury retrograde. Um, I actually had to give you this quote because I loved it so much. It came from foreverconscious.com. Um, and they said that Mercury is the messenger of the gods. So when Mercury is in retrograde, it is a time for you to own your inner God. You should listen to your own inner God during Mercury retrograde. And I loved that spin on it because Mercury retrograde often and frequently gets such a bad rap. Um, so we enter the month in Mercury retrograde, which lasts until February 20th. That is when Mercury goes direct. So what can I tell you about this particular Mercury retrograde? Well, all of the Mercury retrogrades this year are in air signs. So uh, that's one thing that you need to know. And so each one of these Mercury retrogrades that we have in 2021 are going to make communication a little more difficult than even our other Mercury retrogrades where communication is difficult. So Mercury re rules communication and technology. Um, and this is why our laptops go haywire or why we have issues with our phones or the internet. Um, and so having Mercury go retrograde in Aquarius, which also rules technology, 
um, and communication in the collective really can just mean that there's an incredible amount of strain during these periods of retrograde. Um, and so it's just something to be aware of, right? It's nothing that you really need to like be super worried about, but it's something to be aware of. As you know, I always say, be prepared. Be prepared for what's coming so that you can make the best decisions for yourself. Um, the other thing that we have this month is an Aquarius stellium. That's another thing of note in February. So what is a stellium? Well, a stellium is when you have three or more planets in one sign, and we have that happening this month. And, you know, that Aquarius stellium energy is um, really going to push us to be focused in one area of our life. Um, and that area might have to do with the advancement of humanity. It might have to do with our humanitarian work in this world. It may have to do with our purpose work in this world. Um, and it may have to do with technology or the way that we're communicating or, or um, you know, we've got a Mercury retrograde happening for the majority of the month too. So one of the things that I've been looking at that's been really up for me is the ways that I communicate inside my team and the ways that I communicate to my community. So I will be using retrograde, which is always a very beautiful time to revisit, reflect, rework, rewire, reconnect um, with my email lists and sort of revamp, revamping. It's all the re's, right? Mercury, Mercury retrograde. Um, but I'm really going to be looking at how I communicate, especially through technology to my community. So that's sort of how I'm going to be spending the next three weeks. Um, so we've got that, uh, Aquarius stellium. We also have the first of three Saturn square Uranus, uh, happening, happening this month. And that happens on February 17th. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute, but it's a big theme this month. It gets activated this month. We have three more of them this year, as I mentioned, but what is this about Saturn square Uranus? This is about change, rebellion, revealing of shocking information and new technology innovations or advancements. So the thing I would say about this is watch the cryptos this month. Um, this is a month where you should be investing in cryptocurrency if that's something that's interesting to you and it's a full soul yes to you. So I'm not giving financial advice, but what I am saying to you is that based upon what's happening astrologically and um, this situation with Saturn square Uranus, as well as um, some of the Uranus Taurus aspects that we've talked about and the dismantling of the existing financial systems and structures this year. Um, this is a really, really incredible time to invest in cryptocurrency. If your soul says it's a soul, yes, if it's a full, yes. Um, I don't believe everyone should be investing in cryptocurrency. I only believe that you should be investing in it. If, if your inner knowing and your highest level version of yourself says it's a go, but if you're going to do it, this month is the time to do it. Um, Saturn square Uranus also brings attention to the climate. So expect to see the Biden administration um, pushing climate reform this month. Um, I would not be surprised to see more executive orders on climate reform, more stuff pushed through, more bills pushed through on climate reform. Um, and so neither here nor there, whatever side of the coin you happen to land on there, I just believe that that's something that we're going to see from that administration. And I'm not saying whatever side of the coin you land on in regards to, do you want to protect the environment or not? I'm just talking specifically about climate change. Um, and so at any rate, expect to see, uh, more of what you've already seen from the Biden administration. Uh, this year in 2021, certainly, um, as we have these three Saturn square Uranus events. Um, okay, so let's move on and kind of go through a timeline over the month. Um, February 6th, we have Venus square Uranus. Uh, and then with that Mercury retrograde aspect that's adding to that Venus square Uranus, um, this is just basically like old relationship shit may come up um, that needs to be healed. So um, frequently past lovers or past relationships will contact us during re retrograde. The energy is just really supportive of that. And it typically tends to happen. You may have dreams about people that you dated previously. Like that's all quite common in Mercury retrograde, but because of this specific, um, conjunction with, 
um, Venus and Uranus, it really could be a time to heal old relationship wounds that have been hanging around for a long time. So if you're one of those people that has some stuff that needs to be healed, like February 6th, on or around February 6th is a really great time to do that. February 11th or 12th, depending on where you are in the world, we have an Aquarius new moon. Um, so this is not a manifesting moon. I know I've been saying this to you a lot lately. So you guys are probably like, when's the manifesting new moon? New moons are typically for creation work, right? But because we've got a Mercury retrograde happening and this new moon is in Aquarius, it really is time to focus on rest, rejuvenation, um, reflection, and recharging. So that's really what I would be doing uh, during this Aquarius new moon, not manifesting, not doing creation work. Um, it's also a really beautiful couple of days. And you know, uh, new moon energy is very active 72 hours prior and 72 hours after. I think it's a beautiful time to be focusing on humanitarian ventures, um, giving to charity, charity, if that's something that calls to you. But um, I would really use this, it's kind of this pinnacle point in this Mercury retrograde as well. So I would really be using this energy of this full moon, or sorry, this new moon, to um, really look at what needs to be revisited, what needs to be reworked. I'm having a hard time with all the re's. I'm like stumbling over the re's. Um, what needs to be revisited and what needs to be reworked? Um, because you'll get a lot of clarity around this Aquarius new moon, especially if it comes to things surrounding technology, um, humanitarian things, uh, communication. So uh, that is your, those are your marching orders for February 11th and 12th. Uh, February 12th also happens to be the Chinese New Year, the year of the metal ox. Um, I'm going to actually be doing a separate um, metal ox uh, wealth forecast for the Chinese New Year and what to expect in relation to some of the aspects that come up with the uh, Chinese astrology. So we will be doing that. That will be coming. It will be a special edition wealth forecast. So stay tuned for that. I'm not going to go too much into Chinese New Year now because we will be doing a detailed uh, wealth forecast on that and what those metal ox aspects mean for us in the coming year, um, the coming Chinese calendar year. So February 7th, it, or sorry, February 17th is when we have that Saturn square Uranus. So Uranus is the planet of change, rebellion, and awakening. We're not experiencing any of that right now, hey? Um, basically, all I have to say about this day and the surrounding days is explosion time. Um, the collective is Uranus, wanting freedom and rebellion. The government um, and the global financial elite, they're Saturn, who wants boundaries and control. Um, so watch the global news over the couple of days leading up to February 17th and the couple of days after. Um, you sh we should really be expecting an explosive time around this time. Um, yeah, like there's going to be things happening on the global stage at this time. Like it's just impossible that it not happen. Um, February 20th, we have Mercury going direct. Uh, please note post shadow does go until March 13th. And um, because these uh, full moons, or sorry, not these full moons, I was just looking at my notes, full moons coming up next on February 27th. Because these Mercury retrogrades are in Aquarius or in air signs all year, um, the post, the pre-shadow periods, which is two weeks prior to the start of retrograde and the post-shadow periods, they're gonna be particularly strong this year. So unfortunately, we're not really getting away with three week Mercury retrogrades this year. We're actually in more like seven week Mercury retrogrades. So it is what it is. Um, you win some, you lose some. Um, and it is a great time to reflect and revisit and, and really like if you spend this time um, as it happens throughout the year, really not fighting what it's for it can be a beautiful time. Um, and then finally, we have February 27th. We have a full moon in Virgo. Um, I'm a Virgo rising, so I always love a good moon in Virgo, whether it's new moon or full moon. Um, but this is a really incredible time to cleanse and clean. Those of you know, that know my refrigerator trick, um, great time to do that on the 
uh, Virgo full moon. If you're desiring to call some wealth and abundance into your life, you can use my refrigerator trick, uh, which is to come take everything out of your refrigerator and freezer. And I do mean everything. Clean it from top to bottom. Make sure all the shelves, all the drawers, all the walls are sparkling clean. Throw out anything that is expired and put everything back in in a really organized fashion. Um, it's an old wives tale. It just works. It will call in money and abundance into your life. So uh, Virgo full moon is an incredible time to do that if you're wanting to really jumpstart into March um, with some good uh, financial support. So that's sort of our divine downloads, energy, astrological influences and forecast for February. So let's see what the cards have to say. So as always, I am using my Robin Wood Tarot deck. It is my favorite. It is the deck that I teach with. By the way, if you're wanting to learn to read cards yourself or for others, um, I have an incredible tarot course um, that is out now. And it is in pre-sale actually, because we are getting ready to go into a big launch. And so you can learn to read the cards for yourself and for others for $188 right now. It will eventually be $333. Um, I'm not sure if my team is on right now, but Laura, if you are on, could you drop the link for the Wealth Alchemy Mastermind and also for the Tarot course? Um, but yeah, reading cards is super fun and it's an amazing thing to study. And I think right now, as the world is going back into lockdown, I'm like, what else do you have to do? Learn how to read Tarot so that you can do these readings for yourself um, and your friends and I think it's a great way to spend lockdown time. Okay, so shuffled ready to do the thing I am actually Remembered, we did things a little differently this year and we actually pulled the themes for the months during the yearly wealth forecast. And I need to pull up the theme for February. Give me one second, guys. Sorry, I just need to find this somewhere. There is a giant mosquito in here that's like the size of a fly. Well, we've got cards of the day posted. Let's see if Mallory posted the theme of the month in the Wealth Witch channel. Card of the month, the 10 of cups. So our February card of the month is the 10 of cups. Um, I love this as a theme card for the month because it is the card, it is the card of the happy family. Um, it's a beautiful card to pull while we have a month that's full of Mercury retrograde because it's literally just telling us, sit back, rest, relax, spend time with your family, everything's gonna be okay. Um, and so this is the card of the happy family. Um, this is the card of the family being upright in all ways, emotionally, financially, spiritually. Um, so 
the thing I think that, that I expressed when I pulled this as a card in the yearly wealth forecast is that yes, we're gonna get a little bit of a reprieve this month, but it's a time to make sure that you remember to maintain being disciplined in your personal practices because it's times like this when things are, are not as difficult and aren't going um, bad or aren't, aren't rough that we actually do slip off from our, our personal practices. So this is just a reminder from me to you to remain dedicated and disciplined to those personal practices, even during good times, because it is that discipline and dedication during the good times that gets us through the times that are a little bit more rough. So with that, let's dive into the first week of the month. I'm going to pull up my calendar. So I make sure that I am giving you the right days. So we will start with Monday, February 1st, and we will go through Sunday, February 7th. So we're now on Tuesday the 2nd. If you're in my part of the world, if you're in the United States, it's still... Well, it's the first, it's the second for you as well. Um, okay, so um, February, well, we'll have a theme of the week. So the theme for that week is the Five of Swords. Five of Swords right side up. So this is one of my least favorite cards in the deck, actually. Um, this card to me really represents angst and anxiety. Um, this card is, if you look at the symbolism of this card, you've got the guy, he's got all the swords, He's got all five of the swords and he's won the war. So the two people that he's been battling, they're walking away um, and he looks happy, but he's looking over his shoulder. So this is the card of looking over our shoulder. This is the card of we've won the war, but we're still doubting it. We still don't feel comfortable. And I don't like that feeling. It's kind of a feeling of being in a little bit of limbo. So that's our theme for the week. Monday, February 1st, we have the Ace of Cups reversed. So this is actually a great card because to me, this is, the, this is the Holy Grail card. I call this the Holy Grail card. Whether it's right side up or upside down, it's still a Holy Grail opportunity. When it's reversed, it means there's a Holy Grail opportunity coming delayed. So Holy Grail opportunity coming delayed, uh, 1st of February. 2nd of February, we have the Five of Pentacles. So Five of Pentacles is a card of missed opportunities. So remember when we're doing a wealth forecast, um, this is today, right? So um, this is my today for some of you that are just waking up in the United States, this is your day. Essentially what this is doing is it's forewarning us to make sure that we're not missing opportunities uh, because they're all around us. When this card appears, it means that opportunities are all around us. It's just a call to us to make sure that we're not being narrow-sighted, that we're not only looking in one area, that we're looking all around us for those opportunities. Wednesday the 3rd, we have the Empress card right side up. So this is great because we've got a Holy Grail opportunity coming delayed. We've got the Empress who, as you can see, is pregnant, getting ready to give birth to something new, getting ready to give birth to this Holy Grail opportunity from Monday, right? So that's a beautiful card to get always, no matter what. Um, then we have on Thursday the 4th, we have the Knight of Cups upside down. So the Knights are messengers in the Tarot. They're always bringing messages. The Knight of Cups is typically bringing messages of love. So what this is indicating is on the 4th that we're not receiving that offer of love that we would like. We're not receiving a message of that offer of love. Again, remember that we are in Mercury retrograde. So we're most likely going to have a few reversed cards in this reading. Um, so Holy Grail opportunity coming delayed, Mercury retrograde, right? Uh, message, often technological in these day, at this day and age, right? We don't really have the horse carrying the mail to us anymore. Um, but a message like that offer of love, the offer we've been waiting for, not coming to us yet, coming delayed. Don't think that's a bad card. Just think it means that the offer that we've been waiting for, the offer that we've been expecting, the offer that we've been wanting, it's coming delayed. Uh, Friday, February 5th, look at this, Ace of Pentacles, two aces in the first week. So Ace of Pentacles, new financial opportunity, high, one of the highest money cards in the deck, new, very lucrative financial opportunity coming this week on Friday the 5th. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah, so, um, you know, it's interesting because it's like this, the theme is like, we're gonna have angst, we're gonna have anxiety, 
Uh, we're going to feel like we're looking over our shoulder, but there's lots of beautiful things happening in this week. So just like hold that reminder um, and that remembrance that there's lots of incredible things happening in this first week, no matter what it appears like moment to moment or day to day. Saturday, February 6th, we have the nine of swords reversed. So this is beautiful, right? So we, we've got this theme of the week of we're feeling angst, we're feeling anxiety, we're looking over our shoulder. Now on Saturday, we have the nine of swords reversed, meaning we move out of that mental anguish that stops on Saturday. Sunday, February 7th, three of wands, our ship's coming in. This is one of my favorite cards in the deck. So this is gonna be a good week, you guys. This is gonna be a good financial week. Um, there are incredible opportunities coming to us this week if we keep our eyes open if we're not narrow focused, if we're looking all around us for the opportunities that are all around us. So Ace of Pentacles, like super, super incredible, lucrative new financial opportunities, ships coming in, holy grail cards. It's, good. it's gonna be a good week, y'all. Okay, and then we have the next week, which is February 8th through the 14th. So the 8th through Valentine's Day. And our theme of the week is the High Priestess reversed. So this card is a warning and a sign to us that we need to make sure that we are following our intuition the second week of the month. So we're going to have a tendency to not follow our intuition. This card is saying, follow our intuition. Okay, I'm just looking at also the dates. Yeah, so this is the week where we have the new moon coming up. Uh, so Monday the 8th, we have the 10 of wands. We're feeling burdened, um, feeling burdened by our responsibilities. The thing about this card to note is that this man is carrying these beautiful wands, like 10 of these beautiful wands, and he's heavily burdened, but he has these incredible resources, right? Like he has the responsibilities that make him feel burdened. And so it's, it's, uh, not necessarily a bad thing. It's just showing that we may feel a little weighed down by our burdens on the 8th and our responsibilities. On the ninth, another um, incredible money card, three of pentacles, right side up, Tuesday the ninth. Um, so this card is about getting something ready to take to market. So this is um, in very much about the material plane. It's a three card. It's about, it can often represent contracts, getting contracts ready to be signed. Um, but then it also is literally just about getting things ready to take to market. So that's what you should be focusing on on Friday, February 9th. Wednesday, February 10th, we have a uh, seven of pentacles reversed. So this is the card of return on investment. And when it's right side up, it says you're getting your return on investment. When it's upside down, it either means you're not getting your return on investment or you're getting it delayed. Again, we are in Mercury retrograde and we've got incredible money cards in this deck um, up until this point. So to me, this is absolutely indicative of there's a return on investment coming for this thing you're looking at giving birth to, this holy grail opportunity, this new financial opportunity, this thing you're getting ready to take to market. But the return on investment is going to be a little bit delayed. It's going to take a little bit longer than you had hoped or you thought it was going to take. Um, so then we have Thursday, the 11th, the strength card, which is beautiful. Um, this is when the full moon is, depending upon where you live um, in the world. It's either the 11th or the 12th. So the strength card, we have everything we need to move forward. This also could be a little bit indicative of time. So we may be putting things into motion here in February that come to fruition in August. Um, this card often represents the month of August. Because we've got these holy, this holy grail uh, reversed, we've got this um, return on investment coming delayed. We're getting something ready to, to come to market. Um, I think this is really a call for us to be focusing on things that potentially could come to fruition in August. And if you are a business partner of mine, uh, you know who you are. We definitely have something coming to fruition in August. One, two, three, four, five, January, February, March. Yeah. Okay. So now we have, oh, what just happened? February 12th, uh, new moon is happening at 3.06 a.m. Bali time on uh, the 12th. This is the King of Cups reversed. So interestingly enough, we've got another court card, another another Cups court card reversed. 
Um, in the second week of the month, we had that, that Knight of Cups reversed. So this is either a fair-haired man in your life upside down emotionally, but I think it also can just be an indication of whatever's happening in our life during this week, we need to lead with love. Um, but we've also got this interesting new moon, um, Venus Uranus, Venus square Uranus stuff, Mercury retrograde. So it may mean that there is some past love relationship that needs to be revisited, healed, and get, get some closure on, um, during that new moon. Uh, February 13th, which is a Saturday, we have the six of pentacles reversed. So this card is the card of resources, your most precious resources, time, energy, money. Um, it's reversed, meaning we're trying to figure out how to spend it. We're not quite sure. Good news is it's the six of pentacles, meaning you've got the resources. You're just trying to figure out where to spend them. So um, again, this may have something to do with crypto investment. This may have something to do with other investments. This may have to do with these projects that you're working on. It's like you're trying to figure out how to allot your resources. The thing I can always tell you about that is trust yourself. Trust the highest level version of yourself. Cultivate that connection between you and the divine, um, and you can't go wrong. Oh, hold on one second. Hey guys, sorry about that little intermission. Jack just came in from Soraya's room and he was screaming and crying because he was scared. So I just had to go make sure everything was okay there. Okay, so Valentine's Day, February 14th, we have the Eight of Swords reversed, getting unstuck. So it's interesting, there are swords, there's a lot of swords energy in this reading as well, or a fair amount of swords energy, but they're reverse cards. And that's good, that's, that's how we wanna see swords cards, because it means we're moving out of whatever uh, mental anguish or anxiety or frustration that we're having. So that's happening on February 14th, so getting unstuck, moving out of that place where we're holding ourselves back in some way or another. Not the most romantic Valentine's Day card, but hey. Getting unstuck sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Okay, so now we'll move into the week of February 15th through the 21st. Um, this is the week that we have that Saturn square Uranus happening, the first one of the year. So this is the week to watch as far as what's happening on the global stage around the collective rebelling against all of the boundaries and control that's trying to be put upon it. Um, okay, so theme for the week of the 15th through the 21st is the moon upside down. Um, so this is secrets revealed, interestingly enough. So secrets coming to light. And what did we talk about with uh, this Saturn square Uranus? Um, I'm trying to see the exact words that I wrote down. It was, What did I write? Revealing of shocking truths. So that is this card, absolutely. The moon reversed, secrets revealed. So that's our theme for the week. Um, Monday, February 15th, we have the soulmate card. So um, things good in love on the 15th, maybe not so romantic on the 14th, but the soulmate card showing up on the 15th. So soulmate card, remember, can mean uh, romantic relationships, but it can also mean friendships, business partnerships, etc. So Tuesday, February 16th, we have the star card straight up. That's amazing. The star card is literally the card of the heavens are working for us and we feel like the heavens are working for us. So that's beautiful. This is uh, 
interestingly enough, look who this is, the water bearer, right? So the woman in the card is the water bearer. Um, she is the star. She is literally Aquarius, right? This card is an Aquarius card. So we've got all this stuff, all of these, um, the stellium happening in Aquarius, this, this Mercury retrograde happening in Aquarius. Um, Aquarius is about the collective. It is about humanity, humanitarian efforts. So this is like, no matter what happens this week, just remember the heavens are working for the collective is absolutely what that card means. Uh, Wednesday, the 17th, we have the queen of wands right side up. We are fully in our purpose, in our sexuality. Um, we're feeling really good about the work that we're here to do in this world. The queen of wands is all about purpose and passion. So that's a card, the highest purpose and passion card in the deck right side up. So that's beautiful. I think all of these cards, what all of these cards are showing us is no matter what happens this week, like we're fine. The collective's going to be fine. Thursday, the 18th, we have the card of long-term partnership, two of wands, um, looking towards, uh, long-term planning, looking towards further horizons, the card of long-term partnerships. Um, so definitely a good week to, to enter into negotiations um, or sign contracts from that week before. You know, we had that three of pentacles the week before getting contracts ready to be signed. This would be a good time to do that. Um, and that was 15, 16, 17, 18. Yeah. And Friday the 19th, we have the death card. So something dying. Um, this is two days after that Saturn Uranus square. Um, and so this is that thing, right? This is the thing that we've been looking at and waiting for this week. So something has to die. Um, the 20th, we have the page of wands. So the page are, the pages are the court cards that are the seed planters. So planting seeds around purpose and passions over the weekend of the 20th through the 21st. So this is the card for the 20th. So, uh, sowing seeds, planting seeds around purpose projects. Um, and then we have the 21st, uh, the fool reversed. So this is interesting. It's like, yes, it's time to sow seeds on Saturday, but it's not time to take the leap yet. And that's an interesting card to come after we get this card of long-term partnership, right? So it's like, yes, decide on this. Yes. Be ready to do this, but it's not quite yet. Right. Don't take the, don't take the leap yet. Um, someone may be showing up. That's a long-term partner, or you may decide that somebody is a long-term partner. Um, but it's not the time to take the leap yet. The fool card reverse. That card is, uh, is without fail. Always, always do not take the leap. Have caution. Do not throw caution to the wind. So our next and final week of the month, um, because it is February. So it's a short month is the 22nd of February through the 28th of February. And the theme of the week is seven of cups reversed. Um, so when this card's right side up, this card is about um, head in the clouds, trying to make decisions, um, sometimes having a struggle making decisions. This is reversed, meaning the decision's already been made. So this theme of this week is no matter what comes to light, the decision had already been made. Monday, the 22nd, a master day, we have the sun card upside down. So this card to me is always an indication that we need to be paying attention to the children in our lives, um, that our children are upside down um, or the children of the world are upside down. We may have some revealing on Monday the 22nd about um, sex trafficking. Um, I feel like it's a big theme in the coming months, February through April. Um, and so we may start to see some uh, more, um, more clear information on what's happening with child sex trafficking rings in the United States. This is also around the time of the Super Bowl. I'm not exactly sure what day the Super Bowl is, but the Super, but Super Bowl weekend is the largest, um, the biggest weekend for sex trafficking. And so we may have some things coming to light, uh, after that. And, and that may be sort of what's showing up on, um, the 22nd. The 23rd of February, we have four of cups right side up. So this is a card of low level anxiety and depression. It's like nothing serious, but it's just kind of a card of us feeling like meh, meh. So feeling a little meh on the 23rd. 
24th of February, three of cups upside down. So this card is meaning, this card is about like not feeling like celebrating. So I really think what's gonna happen here the last week of the month, well, we're, things are gonna be revealed in that, in the previous week. And so all of that's sort of gonna be settling in for us, whatever needs to die at the end of the month or dies. Um, it's going to show up as the decision already been made. We're going to have some, some revelations around children. We're going to be a little sad about it. We're not going to feel like celebrating or partying. Um, and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the 20th, let's see the 25th. We have the King of Wands right side up. So it's really interesting to me that we've got the Queen of Wands the week before and the King of Wands here. So again, about purpose and passion. But to me, this leads me to believe that somebody's going to stand out victorious um, in whatever this thing is that's going to be revealed. So somebody's going to be the hero. This is very much a card of a hero. Um, so I would say that global light is going to come and shine on somebody that's going to stand out as a hero in whatever has been happening in these last two weeks of February. Friday, the 26th, we have the marriage card upside down. So this is interesting. So this is, this card when it's right side up is literally the marriage card. It can mean getting married. It can mean making the marriage work. Upside down means we're no longer willing to make the marriage work. This feels very much about like the collective, the government, global financial agenda. Like as a collective, we are no longer willing to make the marriage work. Like we're over it, right? We're ready for the rebellion. We're ready for the uprising. Like we're just not having it anymore. So that is definitely indicative of that. Friday, the tw or let's see, sorry, Saturday, the 27th, we have the seven of swords reversed. So this is an interesting card because right side up seven of swords is all about being cheated, feeling cheated. This is saying we don't feel cheated. We're no longer willing to make the marriage work. We don't want to celebrate. We're kind of depressed. Things are upside down, but we don't feel cheated. Um, which leads me to believe that things are actually coming to light where we're feeling like we're getting truths finally. And so we're not feeling cheated. The final day of the month, February 28th, we have the card of the wounded warrior. So this is a beautiful card to end the month on, especially with all of this is also the card of the humanitarian with all of this stuff that we've been seeing in the last couple of weeks of the month. It's just like, we're going to be okay. The collective is going to take some time to heal from the things that have happened, but we're going to be okay. Um, it's a time of non-action. It's a time of holding back. It's a time of observation. It's a time of just healing our wounds, right? And so that's the energy that we're going to be moving into March with. So that is our February monthly wealth forecast. Thank you as always for joining me. I hope that this information was hugely valuable to you um, and that you get a lot out of it. Make sure if you have not already subscribed to my telegram channel, the wealth, Witch channel that you do that because we put publish the cards of the day in there. So you can definitely get those daily reminders in the wealth, Witch channel. We post the cards of the day, the themes of the week, all of that in the telegram channel. So make sure that you check that out. Um, so that's it. That's all I have. Have an amazing rest of your day, morning, evening, wherever you are in the world as you are listening to this podcast or watching this live stream or watching this YouTube or Brighton video. Remember that it is your divine birthright to be wealthy in all areas of your life. And you are so worthy and you are so deserving. Until next time, this is the Wealth Witch signing off. Mwah.